I hate installing Linux in virtual machines. It takes a long time. It is repetitive. It is repetitive. And if you do something wrong, you need to start all over again. So no, I hate it. Hi, this is Karsten with OpenTech. And while you are here, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And now let's talk about cloud in it and how it can prevent this guy from getting even more mad. Let's get into it. Cloud init is an approach to setting up virtual machines, which is based upon already pre-prepared virtual machines. So instead of having to install everything from scratch, you basically use an already existing base. This already existing base can then be configured and you can do that externally. So you basically add additional information to the base image, such as IP address, credentials, and so on and so forth. And everything will be available within the running VM without you having to interact with it upfront. Instead of installing a Linux from scratch, which typically takes between 20 and 45 minutes, with cloud init, the process shrinks down to two to say four or five minutes maximum. So cloud init has a lot of advantages, but you need to prepare your system to work with it. The first thing you will need is a specific cloud init image. Such images are made available by major distributions such as Debian, Ubuntu, and so on and so forth. But you specifically need to search for them. I now use a Debian cloud init image, and you can find that Debian cloud init image at cloud.debian.org slash images slash cloud. Here, you will now need to scroll down until you see Bookworm, which is the current version of Debian. And you now want to click on the latest date that is available on the site. Now you need to scroll down until you see the generic cloud image and you need to download the generic cloud AMD 64 version if you are running Intel or AMD processors. Download it and then you can transfer it to your Proxmox in the next step. To transfer the image to our Proxmox host, we first connect to the Proxmox host and create a dedicated directory where we store the image in. I call mine import. That is all we need to do now. Let's log out and let's continue on our local machine. Here on our local machine, we want to use the SCP command to transfer our downloaded cloud init image over to the server. So what we enter is SCP path to our local version of the image, followed by username at IP address of the remote machine, colon, and then the path on the remote machine. I rename the image here so I don't need to deal with those cryptic names that are provided by default. Let's upload it now. And once that is done, we can continue on the remote machine again. So what you need to know before you can actually start is the name of your local storage environment. In my case, it is local minus ZFS. In your case, it could probably be local minus LVM. So with that out of the way, let's create a new virtual machine and let's do it on the console. What we type is QM create 6 which is the ID I assigned to my cloud init VM, minus minus name, and now we give it a name, minus net zero, word IO, bridge equals VMBR zero. Hit enter and you won't see anything special here. Now we will import the image which we just uploaded. So we type QM import disk 6000 path and name of the image and then the storage location. In my case, again, local minus ZFS. In your case, it could be local minus LVM. Hit enter and after a few seconds, the disk has been successfully imported. Now you need to note the logical address of the newly imported hard drive because that is what it is with your local environment. Note it down and we will use that in the next step. 
The next step is to actually attach the disk to our virtual machine. So we type QM set 6000 SCSI HW with IO minus SCSI minus PCI minus minus SCSI zero. And now the address of the newly created hard drive. In my case, it is local minus ZFS colon VM minus 6000 minus disk minus zero. Hit enter and the hard drive is now attached to the virtual machine. The next thing you want to do is you want to add a drive for the cloud init configuration. So you type QM set 6000 minus minus ID2 local minus ZFS hold on cloud init. And if your local storage environment is LVM, you want to type local minus LVM colon cloud init. Hit enter and then we are good to go. The next step is to make our hard drive the boot disk. So we type QM set 6000 minus minus boot C minus minus boot disk SCSI zero. The last step on the console is to add a serial console to it so we can actually interact with it. So we type QM set 6000 minus minus serial zero socket minus minus VGA serial zero. Perfect. We now have created the virtual machine. Now we can configure it properly and then later on use it. So head over to your Proxmox front end. Here with the virtual machine, you first of all want to head over to the hardware tab and adjust RAM and CPU and CPU model according to your needs. After you have successfully done that, head over to the cloud init tab where you want to add your login name, the default password and and I highly, highly recommend doing that an SSH key, the public key. You will use the corresponding private key to connect to the virtual machine via SSH. Doing that now saves you a lot of hassle later on. Hit regenerate image and your cloud init VM is done. Now, we don't want to do that over and over and over again, right? So what we now do is we convert the VM into a template. Now that we have all the prerequisites done, let's actually create a virtual machine. So right click on your template and select clone. You want to give the virtual machine a name and following that, you can basically make adjustments to the new virtual machine to your liking. Create it and after a few seconds, the virtual machine will be ready for the next step. So before starting the virtual machine now for the first time, you want to head over to the cloud init section. Here you want to adjust the IP address, the network settings. You can leave it to DHCP, but in my case, I want to have a dedicated IP address assigned to the virtual machine. So I therefore enter the IP address of the machine by hand. It's 192.168.10.1.11 slash 24, which is the network mask. I also set the default gateway and accept the changes. Now I click on regenerate image. So the changes are actually made persistent with the cloud init configuration. Now let's head over to the hardware section. And here you can obviously adjust everything, but there's one important section you want to adjust here. That is the hard drive. A hard drive per default has a size of two gigabytes, which is probably not enough. So therefore select it and from the disk actions menu, select resize disk. Now you want to do some maths. I want to have a disk size of 40 gigabytes. So I need to add 38 gigabytes to the already existing two gigabytes. Therefore I enter 38 and accept the change. Fine. Awesome. That is all we needed to do. Now let's start the virtual machine and let's use it. When you start a cloud init based VM, you basically see some things going on. First of all, you will realize that the machine is starting as you would expect, but then there are some cloud init triggers that get executed. So it could be that on console, it looks like a mess, but rest assured, if your configuration is correct, your virtual machine is good to go in just a matter of seconds. All right, there we are. We can now connect to our virtual machine and voila, we are in our virtual machine. And and here we can now act the same way as we would do with any Linux machine. 
that wasn't that hard, right? And the guy from the beginning looks a bit more relaxed and more calmed down. So what do you think? Is Cloudinit the way to go for your virtual machines in your home lab? I highly recommend it, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.